All right, welcome back. We have been talking about how to identify properties, and we're going to continue on with that topic right now. All right, so uh, we're back. We're going to pick up where we left off and talking about uh, how to identify the properties that may be relevant to auction, all right? So what are the things that may help you determine if the property is a a good auction candidate is the motivation of the seller, all right? Is the seller motivated to sell the property, truly motivated? If he's one that may be out searching for, uh, hey, I just wanna test the market to see what I can get, that may not be a good person. If they are an investor and it's a rental property and they're tired of dealing with the problems, then potentially, hey, they're a good motivated seller. If there's someone that's in trouble with the bank and they need to get a quick solution, auctions also may be a good idea. So the motivation of the seller is going to play into whether the property is a good candidate for auction or not. It could also help play into some other ideas with the sale about like financing type. Is this going to be a cash deal where they need to close quickly? Is it, can it be financed? Is it any of those other sources that could potentially cause the financing to be an issue? So those are definitely topics on why you would want to know the motivation of the seller. Now, all auctions in theory are auctionable. You can auction any kind of property you have. If you auction a... Uh, single family residence, a double, a quad, commercial properties. All of those technically can be held at auction. And once again, determining the seller's motivation might dictate whether it's an auctionable property. Not really the type, because of virtually any type of property can go to auction. However, there is one type of property that probably is not well suited for an auction, and these are what we call the white elephant or a unique property or something that has a very narrow uh, group of buyers, okay? Now, some unique properties may have a very narrow group of buyers, but yet are still very desirable. And so I want to contrast the two of these so that you understand. A cabin house on a lake is very unique, all right? But it is probably mid-range and probably has a lot of buyers that have an interest in it. That is the key part. If you get a property that is unique, but the buyers are narrow, that probably is the key that it's not a good auction property. <clears throat> so I live in Nashville, down here in Brown County, and there are auctions all the time, for exact the same, same houses that I was just talking about. You know, we've got lakes and they've got uh, little cabins that people would use for a weekend home or anything like that. Um, it's very unique. However, there is a large group of buyers that want this, so it's, it's suited for an auction. What I'm talking about would be something like Conseco's home, if you remember when it went for sale, the list price was $25 million is what it started at. That is a very narrow range of buyers. You are not going to get 6, 8, 10, 20 people at that auction that can afford a $25 million property. All right? That house was not well suited for an auction. Matter of fact, it wasn't at auction, but that was, that was the example. It was actually sold through a brokerage house. All right? So... Determining if it's auctionable or not is really more about the market or the buyer that you see buying that property, not the property itself, because virtually all properties are auctionable and have the ability to go to auction, okay? Now, there is a little rule that we can use, and excuse me a minute. It's called the two-thirds rule. The two-thirds rule looks at the property and the market and the seller as three distinct categories. And if your property meets or leans towards 
two of the three categories, then that house is probably a great house for auctioning, all right? So let's take a look at these, and I've got them laid out there for you. The market, <clears throat> if the house is, or the market is rather, is a good situation for an auction, if it's a dull market, there's not a lot of activity happening in there. So we can use the auction to boost the activity by creating that buyer frenzy, all right? If there's not enough properties of this type, once again, this is what we talked about if it's unique. Now, you'll see over here in the buyer section that still has to have a broad range of buyers, all right? <clears throat> if it's a new emerging market just coming up, um, Center Grove, Center Grove is pretty established now, but 10 years ago, it was coming up. Those are good properties for auction because as they're emerging and growing in popularity, there are more and more people that want to get to the property, all right? The other one is where the sellers know there's a high demand, like the lake house that we were talking about. If there's a high demand, and that's exactly what we were just mentioning because of the broad range of borrowers, or buyers, that means there's a, a large market, all right? So if the market suits any one of those, potentially that's one leg of the three that can help you determine. Now, if the seller, you can tell the seller is going to be a good candidate if he meets any of these situations. And we've touched on these a little bit ago when dealing with the motivation. Does he need cash immediately? Is the listing getting close to expiring? Uh, has he already bought another home and ready to move on? If so, maybe the carrying costs for this property are high and he wants to eliminate them as quick as possible. So these situations can make your seller a good candidate for auctions. And then the last one is the property itself. If the property has a lot of equity in it, then that allows the, the auction to take place because they know that there can be some wiggle room in the price. If it's a unique property, back to the log cabin on the lake. If it's something where it's sufficiently unique enough that would encourage competition or interest in a number of buyers, that is well suited. If it's vacant, suppose it's one of those that we just mentioned where the seller had a high, uh, already bought another house and moved on. Now he's got a vacant home and he really wants to get rid of it fairly quickly in a shorter time frame than maybe using it through a brokerage house. All right. If it's a property that could be difficult to appraise, I had a, one of my agents yesterday call me and she's getting ready to list a 4,000 square foot house out in the country. And there are no other houses of that size within a five mile radius. And she was trying to determine how am I going to do a CMA on this? And that would be in a great property that it fits in this category as being potentially auctionable. All right. So that's called the two thirds rule. And if your property leans towards the property or the seller or the market, that potential property could be one of the great auctionable houses and that could help you out in your sales uh, strategy, all right? All right, so we've been talking about, you know, identifying the properties and how we determine which properties are auctionable. And we're going to keep rolling on. We got a couple more topics I want to talk about and we'll be right back in the next one.